across the studio, Emma James with Media Watch. Good evening to you. Hi there. Now then, uh, you're starting with look ahead to something that's, been, something that's been built as the show of a lifetime, but not by everybody. Please explain. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, it is, of course, the 4th of July celebrations, preparations well underway now in the United States. Um, a lot of America's cartoonists seem to have taken the stance that this is something to be ridiculed. And Telnay's in the Washington Post uh, calls it Trump's self-serving tank show. Uh, so that's uh, certainly... None too um, complimentary. This one from Bill Bramwell in the New York Daily News. Uh, I miss the old 4th of July celebration, says Uncle Sam. And of course, that image very much a nod to what we saw happen in Tiananmen Square and the idea that perhaps Donald Trump is emulating dictators with the idea of this military parade um, is certainly one that a lot of people are talking about online. Now, the US president himself had this to say, our July 4th salute to America at the Lincoln Memorial is looking to be really big. It will be the show of a lifetime. Now that's the name that he seems to have given to it, the uh, salute to America. A lot of people feeling that this is more about saluting the man himself. Um, this one, I think, Everyone understands where the idea of this military parade came from. He was, of course, the guest of Emmanuel Macron here in Paris back in 2017 for Bastille Day. Uh, and this little snippet shows him pumping his fists as he sees the uh, military might coming down the Champs-Élysées there. Um, the Washington Post, though, has this article which says uh, that this is just a bad imitation of what France does with Bastille Day. Uh, it's by a Paris-based writer, Karina Pisa, and she says that he may have watched the French parade, but he failed to look past its shiny military surface. Um, she said he was obviously enchanted by the tanks and the flyovers, but what he missed were the things that set it apart from what happens in Russia or perhaps North Korea too with these kind of military parades. Um, she says the 4th of July... Uh, 14th of July here in France is about citizenship and unity and there's an international flavour to it too. And um, Also in the Washington Post another interesting piece, this one talks about the sort of the cost and the politicisation of this event. Two and a half million dollars that was earmarked for the National Parks Service is now being redirected uh, for this show of pomp and display of military might and a lot of people very unhappy about that. Uh, a loss also Controversially, the White House is actually handing out tickets to its um, its backers, its donors, if you like, as well as political appointees for this event. So this is an event that's really not necessarily is, for the American people. This is highly people. politicized, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and generally, the Independence Day isn't that partisan. It's not totally free of political influence, it has to be said. But... Um, one thing that is interesting, though, we're already seeing some tanks uh, rolling through Washington. It's been seen on social media. Um, and some people are pointing out that uh, it's not the first time we've seen tanks used in this way. Uh, this is an image from Dwight Eisenhower's uh, inauguration, and it happened with other inaugurations, too. Uh, this image, too, uh, if you're worried about parades becoming an over-the-top celebration of the president, the Army Day Parade in 1942 was a doozy. A doozy. Uh, that is Great a giant word. bust of... Uh, of Roosevelt uh, being driven through the streets. It was supposed to be about recognising the troops and supporting the US troops who were involved, of course, in the Second World War. Um, so you do have to wonder quite why there needed to be a giant bust of the United, uh, the President of the United States at that particular moment. Um, other people really unhappy at the way this makes the United States look. Uh, Julia Ioffe, a journalist, says, I left Russia for this. Uh, and this gentleman saying, the resemblance to days before Tiananmen Square is chilling. We wait and see how that develops. Now, uh, Pride Month may be over, but gay penguins are stealing their headlines for the, um, the second time in a week. <laughs> yes, sometimes reality is stranger than fiction. Uh, gay penguins in London, uh, Marama and Rocky, uh, are their Gen 2s and their lesbians. Uh, they are now raising a chick, having adopted an egg, at the Sea Life Aquarium in London. Now, here they are. This is the happy couple. Uh, you'll see they have a little um, gay pride stone down below. Oh, I can't seem to get to that, but anyway. Uh, this is the chicken I can question. I vouch for that. There he's, it is. Now, uh, he's now two weeks old. Uh, they actually took the egg away from the birth mother because she had two to raise, or would have had two to raise, and they felt that that was too much, so they gave the egg to this lesbian couple who then incubated it, and now here is the result. We don't yet know his name. Um, What's interesting, though, is that it's not the only uh, same-sex coupling uh, in the animal kingdom. Certainly, it's very common, in fact. Uh, but it's not even the only gay 
penguin couple in London. This from London Zoo. This is how they marked um, Pride Month last month. <laughs> Some penguins are gay. Get over it. A banner was put in the enclosure along with uh, Ronnie and Reggie, who live in uh, London Zoo. Ronnie and Reggie, Zoo. the great ones. Absolutely. Love it. Um, and some people weren't happy about it. And this story has just continued to run and run on social media, largely due to the reaction of a Catholic journalist by the name of Caroline Farrow, who tweeted this. Imagine taking your six-year-old to London Zoo and them asking you which penguins are gay. A lot of people felt this is a very strange question to ask. She went on with... Quite a Twitter rant, it has to be said, including imagine the reaction of the National Secular Society or the British Humanists if London Zoo had a sign saying some emus are Catholic. Get over it. Not quite sure what relevance religion or emus has to gay penguins, but there you go. Um, unsurprisingly, a lot of people very angry with what she had to say, especially because she used the word deviant. And some people saying this is really the time that we should use it as a teaching moment. This woman saying her daughter saw the gay penguins, had no problem with it because she's explained about these things. Uh, and this gentleman saying children ask all sorts of random questions. The correct response would be, I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter as long as they are happy. And that is a great philosophy. Emma, thank you very much, Julia. Emma James of Media Watch, great to see you. Kate.